Welcome to the History of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. For almost two decades, I hosted history-related radio programs broadcast throughout North America on a francophone network of French-language community radio stations. One of these weekly shows was Au Courant de l'Histoire, which translates in English as Historical Currents. The program consisted of anything and everything related to the local, national, and international study, analysis, retelling, and pure enjoyment of history and genealogy. During those many years, I reviewed books, documentaries, films, shared information, data, research, and interviewed many authors, historians, professors, scholars, genealogists, curators, and history buffs. I even planned several field trips throughout North America. I also produced a few English-language videos along the way. One such video was the life and deeds of a man that produced works that would enchant millions of kids, young and old, throughout North America. I hope you enjoy the tale of master storyteller Charles Perrault, known to his English readers as Charles Perrault. This edition of Timeline presents Charles Perrault, Mother Goose Nursery Rhymes, and Brothers Grimm Fairy Tales. The birth of French author Charles Perrault, pronounced in French as Charles Perrault, is situated on the timeline in the 17th century in 1628. To put this in perspective, Jacques Cartier began exploring North America in 1534, and the French Revolution started in 1789. Before Charles Perrault became famous for his well-known fairy tales, he was a writer of serious literature and a member of the prestigious French Academy, the Pantheon of the French Language. Perrault was born in Paris to a wealthy bourgeois family, the youngest of seven children. He attended good schools and studied law before embarking on a career in government service, following in the footsteps of his father and brothers. In the 1650s, Perrault took part in the creation of the Academy of Sciences as well as the restoration of the Academy of Painting. When the Academy of Inscriptions and Belles Lettres was founded in 1663, Perrault was appointed its secretary and served under Jean-Baptiste Colbert, finance minister to King Louis XIV. In the same year, he became a controller general of the Department of Public Works. In this position, as described in his memoirs, he was able to save the Tuileries Gardens for the benefit of the people of Paris, instead of exclusivity for the royal family. Using his influence as Colbert's administrative aide, he was able to get his brother Claude employed as designer of the new section of the Louvre Palace. In 1669, Charles advised the king to include fountains representing ancient fables in the labyrinth of the Gardens of Versailles. He also produced the guidebook for the Labyrinth of Versailles printed at the Paris Royal Press in 1677. As artistic and literary advisor to King Louis, Perrault became an influential figure in the 17th century French literary scene and wrote several works about the arts. His opera treatise was one of the first documents of the literary debate that was later to become known as the Quarrel of the Ancients and the Moderns, which pitted supporters of the literature of antiquity, the ancients, against supporters of the literature from the age of Louis XIV, the moderns. Perrault was on the side of the moderns and wrote the poem The Century of Louis the Great in 1687. He argued that because of the king's enlightened rule, the present age was superior in every respect to ancient times, including its modern French literature. When Jean-Baptiste Colbert died in 1683, Perrault lost all of his appointments and was forced into early retirement at the age of 56. After this, Perrault decided to continue writing and dedicate himself to the education of his children. He had married 19-year-old Marie Guichon in 1672. She had two sons with Perrault, but died at the young age of 25. After writing epic poetry that showed his genuine devotion to Christianity, Perrault, at age 69, published Fairy Tales and Stories of the Past with Morals, subtitled Mother Goose Tales, 
a collection of literary fairy tales based on French popular tradition. The book was celebrated because it was written during an era when fairy tales were fashionable amongst aristocrats, in sophisticated court circles, and in Parisian literary salons. Its publication made Perrault suddenly famous and credited as the main founder of the modern fairy tale genre. Although his work reflects awareness of earlier fairy tales, many of the popular stories that we hear today are told as he wrote them. In the stories, he used images from around him and influences from his experiences and travels. Some were original literary fairy tales modified from commonly known traditional stories, while others were based on pre-existing folk tales written by earlier medieval writers. He also contrasted his folktale subject matter with details, asides, and subtext drawn from his contemporary world of fashion, morals, and culture. Following up on the spirit of these tales in 1699, he translated into French verse a Latin collection of ancient Greek stories known as the 100 Fables. Several of Perrault's tales such as Cinderella, Little Thumb, Bluebeard, and Little Red Riding Hood continue to be printed and are still well liked throughout the world. Many, such as Puss in Boots and The Sleeping Beauty, have been reinterpreted, modernized, and sometimes adapted to different art forms such as ballet, opera, theater, television, and film. Many of Perrault's stories influenced the German versions published 200 years later by the Brothers Grimm in their 1812 folktale collection, Grimm's Fairy Tales. As mentioned, the birth of Charles Perrault is situated on the timeline in 1628. In each edition, our timeline is presented in a simple manner that is easy to comprehend and fun to replicate for school projects. Charles Perrault died in Paris in 1703 at age 75. To put this in perspective, simply insert this event at the appropriate location on the timeline. This concludes our illuminating look at Charles Perrault, Mother Goose Nursery Rhymes, and Brothers Grimm Fairy Tales. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation and look forward to meeting you again soon along the timeline. Many of Charles Perrault's fables and stories became major Hollywood movies, and a few were honored by the Academy Awards. Here's the audio track of a video I produced from my Timeline YouTube channel about the history of the Oscars. This edition of Titans of History presents the Oscars. The Academy Awards, or Oscars, is an annual American awards ceremony honoring cinematic achievements in the film industry. The various category winners are awarded a copy of a statuette officially called the Academy Award of Merit, which has become commonly known by its nickname, Oscar. The awards are overseen by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, established in 1927 by film industry mogul and pioneer Louis B. Mayer. His purpose in creating the award was to unite the five branches of the film industry, including actors, directors, producers, technicians, and writers. Historically given during the first quarter of the new year, the awards honor achievements for cinematic accomplishments for the preceding year. The first Academy Awards presentation was held on May 16, 1929, at a private dinner at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel with an audience of about 270 people. The post-awards party was held at the Mayfair Hotel in Los Angeles. The cost of the guest tickets for that night's ceremony was $5. Fifteen statuettes were awarded, honoring participants in the filmmaking industry for their works during the 1927-28 period. The ceremony ran for 15 minutes. It is the only Academy Awards ceremony not to be broadcast either on radio or television. The awards ceremony was first televised in 1953 and is now seen live in more than 200 countries. We hope you have enjoyed this presentation and look forward to sharing history with you again soon.
Join me next time as we resume our regular series narrative. I'm Mark Vinette, and I hope you're enjoying the ride. Thank you.